for much more on a momentous day in the Big Ten. We welcome in Jerry DiNardo. Jerry, let's start with the big picture look and your perspective on the league being willing to adjust the qualifications necessary in allowing Ohio State into the championship game. Well, I agree with the decision for a few reasons. Number one, the championship game is supposed to take the best team from the East and play the best team from the West. And I, I believe Ohio State's the best team in the East. They, they went head-to-head -head with Indiana. They beat Indiana. And if they played this week and they lost, they would still win the tiebreaker because they beat Indiana if they both, in that scenario, had one loss. But, Rick, I... I also agree with Scott Dolson, the, the AD at Indiana, longtime Indiana guy. He was there when I was there. I mean, he, he, he bleeds crimson. And he said, uh, we've had a great year. We're disappointed, but we had our chance against Ohio State and we lost by one touchdown. I don't know that anybody could sum it up any better than Scott Dolson, the Indiana athletic director, did. Yeah, it was a classy statement. We'll get to yes. that entire statement in just a minute. But first, Ryan Day also issuing a statement recently, head coach of the Buckeyes. On behalf of Ohio State University, the players, all those associated with the football program and our fans, I am appreciative of our Big Ten Conference colleagues for reconsidering the six-game requirement to qualify for the Big Ten Championship game. A lot of changes have happened since that recommendation was put in place. I know making this decision was not easy, and I am thankful for the opportunity our players will now have to play in Indianapolis as an undefeated East Division champion. Jerry, I have heard the argument out there, does this really matter? Ohio State, if it played Iowa or Wisconsin next week, if the rules weren't changed and they were 6-0, they would likely still be part of the college football playoff. To you, though, that's missing the point. Why? Missing the point about as big as you can miss a point, right? You, you, you will have very few chances to play for a championship, whether it's a high school championship, a college championship. And, and that rationale says to me that winning a Big Ten championship isn't significant. I, I, I've got several championship rings home. They mean the world to me. And to say that if Ohio State would play Iowa or Wisconsin in that two versus two game, it wouldn't hurt them with the college football playoff. Rick, that may be true, but I don't know that Ohio State is in control of being in the college football playoff. If Florida beats Alabama and Clemson beats Notre Dame, Ohio State may not get there even if they are undefeated. And I think the, the number of games could hurt them in that scenario. But to diminish a chance for a Ohio State player to play for a Big Ten championship because there's some bigger prize that you don't control, I think that misses the mark big time, Rick. Before we wrap up this discussion, Jerry, let's look at the other side of the coin. We did mention Indiana. It has been a terrific season for the Hoosiers. Three wins over teams that were ranked inside the top 25, including a win over Wisconsin with your backup quarterback. You play Ohio State to within a touchdown. I know they're disappointed. I know there are those who are going to say they met the requirements until this morning but, Jerry, we can't take anything away from Indiana did, even though they won't be in this Big Ten championship game. Hey, we all know, Rick, they've had a great season. And I predict Tom Allen will wind up being the winningest coach in Indiana football history before he's, he's done coaching. But, but this is an old argument for me. This isn't the first time I've thought through this. I, I believe a undefeated divisional champion, someone that goes 6-0 and in their division, regardless of what happened in their crossover games, they could have lost – two or three crossover games. They could have lost a non-conference game. Someone who's undefeated in their division deserves to go to Indianapolis. So in my way of thinking, Ohio State is undefeated in their division. They deserve to go to Indianapolis. It doesn't take anything away from Indiana. It, it, it just, it's been my philosophy. I, I think someday there's gonna be a six and zero divisional team that doesn't go to the championship game and we're gonna revisit this entire argument. Ohio State's undefeated, undefeated in division, in their division. They belong in Indianapolis. Yeah, I've heard the phrase used, nightmare scenario, regarding <laughs> what the Big Ten had to go through this week. No, no, no. The nightmare scenario would have been if Ohio State and Indiana were not able to play each other this year, and then we were into this discussion with a 6-0 Indiana team and a 5-0 Ohio State team, where would we be then? That would be a much different story, of course. That means that Ohio State would have played Maryland or somebody else to get there. But the Big Ten, at least 
didn't have to deal with that on this day. Jerry DiNardo, as always, good stuff. We appreciate the insight. Thanks, Rick. All right, so Jerry mentioned the statement issued by Indiana Athletic Director Scott Dolson. Here it is in its entirety. Coach Allen and I are proud of this team and the success we have had so far this season. We are one of only two teams in the country with three top 25 victories and have matched a program record for Big Ten wins. Although we understand the conference's decision, we are disappointed. From the start of the year, we have said we can only control what we can control. We had a chance to earn our spot in the Big Ten championship game, but ultimately fell a touchdown short on the road against a great Ohio State team. All right, let's get more from Dave Wanstead. Dave, let's start with Ohio State. Obviously, mm. great news for the Buckeyes. And for those who say they didn't reach the preseason qualifications, my response would be they played and they beat everybody on their schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And, and to echo what Jerry said a little bit, and I would take it a step farther, I, I think they're not only the best team in the East, I think they're the best team in the Big Ten. And and, and obviously we saw what Indiana said. I mean, they, they beat Indiana. So, I mean, they should be there. There's no question about it. It's good for Ohio State. It's good for the Big Ten Conference. I would take it farther than that. It's good for college football in my opinion I mean there, there was question whether the Michigan game was going to go on when the rankings come out yesterday and a big part of this college football playoff selection committee is a little bit of the eye test thing and they still had Ohio State you know in the top four even with all the question marks and missing a game so they they, they really like what they see in Ohio State and and let's 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 look at the, the whole country for a second you know there, there's not going to be anybody from the big 12 go there's not going to be anybody from the Pac-12 go as of now. And, and I don't think the committee wants two teams from the ACC, and they don't want two teams from the SEC. They want the, a Big Ten champ that, that merits going there, and the only team that, that that would beat, in all honesty, is Ohio State. Yeah, right now they could get two teams from the ACC if you want to consider Notre Dame an ACC team, since they do play now that ACC football schedule and will face Clemson in the ACC championship game. Listen, there's not going to be a Big Ten championship game for Indiana. There is not going to be a spot in the college football playoff, but we could be talking about a New Year's Six Bowl. For those out oh, there belly aching about what this means for Indiana, Coach Tom Allen, I believe, would be the first guy to tell you there is still a ton to play for for the Hoosiers. Absolutely. And, and you know, we talked about the season that they had, you know, beating up three ranked teams, top 25 teams at the time. And, and, and Coach Allen, in my opinion, I mean, he's attractive to a bowl game because I think he should be coach of the year. You know, really. So, I mean, you, you got a lot of players that are playmakers and have done it on. But also you got a coach, I think, that has done something at Indiana, what, two nine-plus winning seasons? And before that, there was eight losing seasons. I mean, uh, all the statistics are lined up there, and, and, and they're deserving. I mean, they're going to have to take care of business, I think, but they are – Big time deserving to be there for a New Year's Day Bowl, without a doubt. It'd be very interesting to see if there is an adjustment and Indiana doesn't necessarily play the number two team in yeah. the West of Champions Week as everything right now is up for debate. Could they potentially try again against Purdue after this week's bucket game was canceled? All right, uh, lastly, Dave, now we know. It's Ohio State and Northwestern yeah. for the second time in, a, in, a, in just a short span in the Big Ten championship game. Quickly give us an early preview of what we'll see next Saturday in Indianapolis. If, if, if you're a if go Cats, if you're with Coach Fitz, this is a great opportunity for Northwestern. I mean, if I'm a Northwestern fan, alum, that's what I'm thinking. What an opportunity, right, to go and beat Ohio State. And really, it's strength versus strength. The best thing about Ohio State's football team is their offense. We know that. And the best thing about Northwestern's football team is their defense. Somehow in this game, I don't see Northwestern being able to score enough points. They've got to do something. And, and right now, Northwestern's second in the conference in takeaways. They're plus eight in turnover margin. They have to steal two possessions somehow. You know, and get those and keep that ball away from Ohio State. They can't get into a shootout. We know that. So to me, it's going to be defense big time and, and, and steal a couple possessions. It may be in the kicking game. Somehow get the ball a couple extra times. And, and we know Coach Fitzgerald loves to go for it on fourth down. Maybe you get a little Every bit risky time. early in the game yep. on the minus side of the football field. And like you said, try to steal a few possessions. Keeping the ball out of the hands of Justin Fields yep. is the best defense that Northwestern can provide. The Big Ten Championship game presented by Discover next Saturday, noon Eastern kickoff in Indianapolis. Dave Wanstead, appreciate the time as always. Always a pleasure, Rick.